Ambient Flix interns Alan Lynn, Kimberly Yu, Nguyen Pham, Jessica Munoz, Emily Hugan, and Andrea Guterres. Mentors Joel Brinkman and Ed Bukowski. So currently what we have with recommendation dungeons, including like Netflix as well, is they begin with a blank slate. So essentially if someone makes a user at Netflix, um, Netflix will typically recommend maybe like the top 10 movies that they have on their platform or maybe the top 10 TV shows on our platform. Um, but that getting um, specific recommendations to their users actually requires a long term user interaction to receive accurate personal recommendations. So essentially the user has to go through several different trial and errors of saying Yes, I did enjoy this movie or yes, I did not enjoy this movie before they actually get to their personalized recommendations. Um, and that requires a lot of user interaction. And so this is the type of problem that we're hoping to um, provide a solution for with Ambient Books. When looking at a Harvard published paper named Making Sense of Recommendations, we learned that recommended systems consistently outperform human recommenders, whether these people are strangers, friends, family members, or significant others. Despite this, people trust recommender systems less than they trust humans. People distrust recommender systems. We find that people think that recommendations from a system are harder to understand than recommendations from a person. In the paper, they even reference Netflix algorithm saying that the flaw isn't the recommendation, but how one chooses to recommend solution, a recommendation system that generates movies and TV shows based on signals from the person's ambient environment, making it more customizable for the user. We collected data from other platforms such as the Twitter API, the Yelp API, local news, and weather API and Spotify API. Um. Ambience can be described in many ways, but um, more often than not, it is described as setting a certain tone or mood using elements of sound, sight, and even presentation. Amazing. So part of this project is actually splitting it up into three parts, essentially. And so the three parts are two teams to um, head those. And so we have the data collection side and the data classification and processing side. Um, so on the data side, we had Jessica, Alan, and Andrea. And on the data classification side, we had Kimberly, Emily P, and Emily H. Um, and so essentially the architecture of this, we can go to the next slide. And so you can see here on this a wonderful diagram we have, we essentially bring in the Twitter weather um, and location. This was actually just like a, a pre-start mock-up. So we actually added additional APIs. Um, so we have our APIs fed into our data collection side and we actually feed it to a recommendation engine which processes that data um, and prov actually queries data from MovieDB and creates a list of recommendations, which eventually those recommendations and movie IDs are fed to our presentation layer, which is like our third part to our project, uh, which is our website that we actually created for this project. So um, these all come together in order to feed information to one another. So for the data collection process, again, we use various APIs in order to get as much information related to the user as possible. We try to get personal with their Spotify and Twitter API, as well as use regular ambient environments such as their location and getting local news and local weather. For the Twitter API, we focused on two main elements, which were the person's followers uh, and the people that they followed, as well as their Twitter feed, which includes tweets and retweets from themselves and the people that they follow. One of the things that we ran into in the data collection process a lot, and we did uh, with all of the, of the various APIs, was parsing that data and getting specific keywords that could be passed to the recommendation engine. Uh, we worked with things such as stop words to eliminate words such as then, as, get that were not exactly relevant to the search results and could thus just mess up our system in general. For the weather API, we did uh, something similar, 
one of the interesting interesting things that we did was we assigned keywords ourselves uh, in terms of the temperature. So the temperature that we got from the API was a numerical value, and we kind of just uh, created parameters ourselves on determining what type of temperature aligned with what type of temperature type. With the news data, again, we had to apply stop words to get rid of uh, irrelevant words that might have popped up. We queried based on location, and so we got news that was relative to the user's location and thus more relevant in their ambient environment. With the Spotify API, we figured that knowing ambience could be set by music, we used the Spotify API to be able to make movie recommendations. Spotify has a lot of documentation in which we can inquire someone's music taste based on their web playlist. By looking at a user's playlist, we make connections that those who listen to country are more frequently to watch Western music, movies, and those who listen to rock often watch science fiction movies. To go more into detail about the Spotify breakdown, uh, Spotify is a RESTful API with a lot of detailed documentation online, which made the process easy. We broke everything down within six steps. The first step being uh, the first and second step being authentication. Uh, there are two types of authentication, one of them being uh, for the user, which is the access token, and the other being a bearer token. Uh, there are different ways to get this kind of authentication, but uh, very simply, we grab the client ID and client secret that is given for every user and uh, use that information to get the access token, which is a certain set of uh, characters along with uh, numbers that basically give you more user information and allow you to later on request another type of authentication, which is a bearer token. This is all required within the Spotify API. After this, uh, we needed to get that playlist information. Now, we all tend to have uh, different music tastes. Some of us like country with metal and pop. We wanted to get as much information about a user to have a better recommendation. We automated uh, how, instead of requesting a single bearer token to get that information about every playlist, we did automate this we were able to have the bear token be refreshed after it expired along with the access token which it does expire as well um, and in this case a user could have 20 playlists and it would be able to run through all of those uh, unless we gave it a limit and as it starts going through those it starts acquiring playlist information this could be track artist etc Something that wasn't included on there was a genre, which we ended up adding later on, which was a secondary layer of information to acquire. Uh, after getting all of this info, we wanted these uh, this information to be displayed in a text file to later on give it to the next team uh, for the recommendation engine. To the left, you can see this text file which looks a little bit overwhelming, but has a lot of helpful images, market information as to where the artist is, and name of the tracks, etc. Then when it came towards the Yelp API, often more than not, we hear comparisons between what you watch and what you can eat. Comparing these ideologies that television and eating hold the same repetition patterns and you are what you eat. And taking a look at the reviews for Blue Fried Chicken, I saw that just like movies and TV shows, they set an ambience. A lot of the reviews often describe having a sense of home and a sense of community based on its location. Fans of certain TV shows are more bounded to go to certain locations if they're bounded with things they like. When collecting Yelp's API information, I chose to go with the direction of web scraping using Jupyter Notebook extension rather than the actual API. After attending one of the Code Day Labs events while working on the Yelp API, I was able to see the contrast between API and web scraping. Unlike the API, it was easier to get direct information specifically for build business by filtering unnecessary words within a review and placing it into a sentimental scale. This allowed me to compare from positive to neutral to negative reviews. Although we collected a bunch of data, we did realize that there is potential inaccuracies that could happen in our data. 
Just because you live in the country doesn't mean that you will always want to watch a certain type of show or movie, but that small analysis of you might make a change of what you do choose to consume because it's a sense of comfort. This also applies to any of the other streaming services we chose to collect data from. Um, so the second part of Ample and Fix is a recommendation engine. So a recommendation engine is a pre-put application that can search for movies using the MovieDB API by querying the keywords from the data collector. Then we'll have a scoring mechanism to attach a score to the movies and collect a recommendation list based on the results that we have from the MovieDB API. Um, and lastly, the recommendation engine will output a text file containing the movie IDs of all the, all of the recommendations. And so now I will go into a little bit details of how the recommendation engine works. Um, so the input to the recommendation engine would be a text file from a data collector that contain all of the keywords. Then uh, after the file, the text file is fed into the recommendation engine, all of the keyword is going to be classified um, by the API that it came from. So we have names, location, genre, tweet, song, letter, and news. Each of the classification will have a weight attached to it. So for now, the weight is hard coded it because uh, based on what we think is more important than the other. Then all of the keywords is going to be query on the MovieDB database to give us uh, a list of movie results, which will then be put into a recommendation list. Um, so now, so here we'll have a scoring um, service to uh, calculate the score of the movie. So basically the movie, the score of the movie is going to be determined by the number of times the movie appear in the movie results. Um, so if I query the keyword and the movie appeared twice, that will give the movie a score of two. Um, then after all the movies has been scored and put into the recommendation list, uh, we will do a second check to see how the movies uh, fit into the keyword list. And to do that, we will again query all the movies in the recommendation list on the MovieDB database to get more detailed information, information such as movie keywords and genre. Then we'll check to see um, how many times these keywords and genres appear in the keywords list, and that will add on to the score of the movie in the recommendation list. Um, and after doing that second check, uh, a recommend the recommendation list will be updated with the uh, will be updated and um, sorted with the movie with the highest score at the beginning of the rec list, and, and the movie with the lowest score at the very end of the recommendation list. And our final output would be um, a text file of all of the movie DBs of of the of the movie IDs of all the recommendations. Optimization. Before we had an abundance of classes and objects causing the code to run slowly. To make the code run faster, we added a method to read JSON from a URL. We removed unnecessary for loops also, we combined methods um, such as the ones that check the movie's genres and keywords with the, the file from the data collectors. Furthermore, we coded the engine so that we only go through 50% of the movies with the highest scores to narrow down and refine the results. So for our web server, we decided to use uh, JSP plus Spring Boot and Java in order to build it. We look to just get the output from the recommendation file and I'll put it into a way that was very viewable for the user who is looking to get these movie recommendations. We use JSP in order to quickly read in a list of IDs uh, for all of the movies that we wanted to recommend. And then we just went to the movie DB and got the respective movies and their posters to display on the website. For our project, it is deployed on GitHub on the following link on your screen. We want it to be basically just a package that the user can download from our website. We do have a readme with instructions as well as several compiled bat files that you'll just run in order and very easily just get our program up and running on your computer. 
So part of this conversation is, of course, how to make this better. So currently our application is just on a local web server. So essentially um, it'll pull up a website on your computer, but it's not necessarily like anyone can access this um, information outside of our actual GitHub and input that. So our first order of business for improving this um, process is to make a live website. So essentially anyone around the world uh, would not have to actually go to our GitHub, but actually just essentially go to ambientflix.com and put in their information, such as their Twitter account um, login and their Spotify account login, and we'd be able to generate these recommendations um, on the go. Um, and building upon that as well, we think it'd also be very useful for us to generate user profiles. And so essentially someone could um, the website would keep the user profile that they have and would actually automatically update the recommendations based on uh, the evolution of that person's personal information. So if someone suddenly starts tweeting a lot about a specific cause, they would perhaps be now recommended more movies or TV shows based on their new interest. Um, so that's part of our further work. This is our contact information. Here are some of the lessons that we wanted to share with um, everyone about just how we felt about um, doing this internship as well as working in a virtual environment. If all else fails, take a new route and figure a new direction to get to the same end goal. Communication and Ed's great diagrams are key. Mess up early. When it comes to team setting, communication and planning are essential to getting the work done. There's no perfect solution at the beginning. Try and fail and retry and ask questions. Always stay positive. Special thanks to Ed Bukowski and Joel Brinkman, our wonderful mentors. Thank you, Code Labs, for giving us this amazing opportunity.